Hello and welcome to you with a risk-free asset. In the prior session, we looked at the portfolio that's composed of only two risky assets. So it's very important that you understand how we form a portfolio of two risky assets because in that portfolio, I explained and we illustrated the covariance, the correlation coefficient. In this session, in addition to the two risky assets, we're going to be adding a risk-free asset which is going to add a little bit more information about what we know. But it's very important that you understand the prior session. Just look in here for the prior recording or in the description in the video below. This topic or these topics are covered on the CFA exam as well as essential or principles of investments. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,800 plus accounting, auditing, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, if you like my lessons, please like them and share them with others. If they benefit you, it means they benefit them as well. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to complement and supplement your accounting as well as your finance and this course specifically education. So I strongly suggest you check out my website. So in the prior session, we looked at two risky portfolios, uh, I'm sorry, at two risky assets in a portfolio, and we try to make sense of this information. And this is the information that we are using. Basically, we were, we were looking at a, at a stock fund with an expected return of 10%. We are looking at a bond fund with an ex expected return of 5%. The standard uh, deviation for the stock is 19. The standard deviation for the bond is 8. And the coefficient... Uh, or the, co the coefficient correlation between the two is point, uh, point 0.2, which is a positive. It's less than one. It means diversification would help us. This is what we looked at in the prior session. And what we did is we composed a portfolio with different weight, which I'm going to show you how to do so or how we did so earlier. This way, it's very very important that you understand how we did so because we're going to be adding to that portfolio. So let's take a look at this. So first, what we did is we have... On one side, we have risk and return. So we have risk, and the technical word is not risk. The technical word is standard deviation. And we have the reward on the y-axis. The reward, we'll call it expected return. And what we're going to do, we're going to plot some points to show you what it looks like, to show you what the graph would look like of the investment opportunity set. What does that mean? It means we're going to be looking at different sets. I'm not going to plot every one of them, but I'm going to plot enough where we have a graph. It would remind you of what we did earlier because we're going to carry this graph and add to it a risk-free asset. That's why I'm doing this. So the first point I'm going to, I'm going to look at as if we invested first let, let's let's uh, let's kind of basically this is let's assume eight percent standard deviation ten percent twelve fourteen don't worry i'm going to show you this graph on the actual graph so i'm just showing you how to build it because if you don't know how to build it it's it's a little bit difficult for you so this is these these are the standard deviation and the returns are four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12. And this is the return starting with 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Okay, now the, my scale may not be perfect. It won't be perfect at all, but it's going to get you the point because it's very important that you understand how you do this, how you build, how you build the graph. I'm going to show it to you at the end. Okay, so let's start by investing 9.2% uh, of our money in stocks and 90.8 in 90.8 in bonds if we do so our expected return will be 5.46 which is we learn how to compute this in the prior session i will not do that in this session so 5.46 someplace here this is the return let me use a different color so you see what i'm doing 5.46 here and the standard deviation is 7.8 so the standard deviation is someplace 7.8 is someplace here. So here's the first point. Okay. And what is, if you remember, what is this first, what does this first point represent? This first point represent, if you don't know what this is, this is the minimum variance portfolio. 
So I'm going to explain real quick what minimum, minimum variance portfolio is because we need to use this. What does that mean? It means at this level, if we invest 9.2 in stocks, 9.8, 90.8 in bonds, we expect to return 5.46 and the standard deviation is 7.8. Let's see what happens if we invest 10% in stocks and exactly 90% in bonds. Our return will go up 5.5, but I will our risk will go up as well. The standard deviation will go up. If we invest 20%, again, return will go up, but risk will go up. Let's see what happens if we invest zero in stocks, zero in stocks, and we invest 100% in bonds. So we didn't invest anything in stocks. We invest 100% in bond. The bond has an expected return of five. Therefore, I'm going to use a different color. This is the five. The five is right here. And the standard deviation for the five will be eight. And someplace here. Okay, and let's do one more and let's graph what if we invest, let's make it 20%. Let's invest 20% in stocks and 80% in bonds. The expected return will be six. Let's use a different color for the third point, the third and last. I'm not going to do any more points. 6% and the standard deviation will be 8.7. Let's just make it someplace here so they meet here. Now, here's what's going to happen. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to draw the line. If we if we, if we if we graph all of those, it's going to look again. Don't worry. I'm going to show you the complete line. It's going to look something like whoops. Let me go back one more time. OK, it's going to look something like this. OK, uh, and to be more specific, to show you what it looks like, it's going to look something like this. So let's work with a complete now picture. So this is the picture I was trying to draw for you. This is the minimum variance portfolio. Minimum variance means what? You're taking, you're taking uh, the uh, minimum amount of risk, minimum amount of risk given, given all these combination in this portfolio. So, and the bonds here is only the bond portfolio. So notice, if you have to choose and hopefully you know this from the prior session. If you have to choose some play, something here or something here, like which is at 6%, which is 6% is what? 6% is 2080. So let's assume this is portfolio A. If you have to choose between portfolio A and the bond portfolio, no questions about it. You would choose portfolio A. Why? Because portfolio A, your return equal to 6%. Your risk or your standard deviation equal to uh, da, 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 something around 8%. It's going to make it 8. The bond, your return is 5. Those are not 100% accurate, the standard deviation, but you guys get the point, and the standard deviation equal to 8. Hold on a second. If I'm taking the same risk, standard deviation is the same. I will definitely would invest in portfolio A because I'm making more return. Now, this is an important, this is an important concept that we're going to be using. This is called the Sharpie ratio. Now, how can, how can we compute the Sharpie ratio? You will see that later. We can compute this and we can find out that the Sharpie ratio for A is more than, more than the standard deviation. Actually, we can do it right now. If we take the risk, we don't have a risk-free return here. If we take the risk for this portfolio here and we take 0 0.06, we're going to take, I'm sorry, yes, the uh, risk premium, which is 0 0.06, because we don't have a risk-free, divided by the standard deviation of A. This is for portfolio A, and we'll do the same thing for port portfolio B. 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.08, we could compute the Sharpie ratio, and let's do do so here before we add anything. So if we do so, 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.08, your Sharpie ratio is 0 0.75, 0 0.05, 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.08, it's 0.625. So you will definitely choose this portfolio. Why? Because the Sharpie ratio, you're getting more return for your risk. That's why you're getting more return for your risk. So this is actually everything that I did so far is something that we learned about. We saw in a prior session, but it's very important to understand how we do this. So please make sure you know how to draw this before we go to the next slide. On the next slide, we're going to be adding what, what we want to do for this session is adding a risk-free asset to the picture. So when choosing 
Their capital allocation between risky and risk-free portfolio, investors naturally would want to work with the risky portfolio that offer the greatest reward for assuming risk. And how do we measure the greatest return for assuming risk? It's this Sharpie ratio, this Sharpie ratio, okay? So the higher the Sharpie ratio, the greater is the expected return corresponding to any level of volatility, which is volatility is risk or standard deviation. And this is how we compute the Sharpie ratio, the expected return of the portfolio minus the risk free, which is the risk premium, the risk premium divided by the standard deviation. Okay. Suppose then we, we are still confined to the risky bonds and fund, but now we can add to our portfolio a T-bill yielding 3%. T-bill means, means a risk free asset. Now we're going to be introducing this picture, introducing a risky free asset. And let's see what's going to happen when we do so. The resulting opportunity set um, is the set is, is the, the resulting opportunity set is the straight line that we call the capital allocation line. And we looked at the capital allocation line in a prior session. If you don't know, if you don't know how to do the capital allocation line, please look in the description. I have the I should have the uh, prior session for that. Now on the next slide we will consider the various capital allocation line constructed with risk-free bills and the vari variety of possible risky portfolio, each formed by combining the stocks and the bonds funds in an alternative proportion. So simply put, what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the date a little bit, and now we're going to be introducing risk-free assets. So here's what we have. Here's what we, we are weighted in stocks, and whatever we are weighted in stocks, we are weighted in bonds. So if we invest 0% in stocks, it means we're investing the remaining in bonds. Okay, so here's the weighted in stocks. This is the expected return of the portfolio. And we're going to be using uh, a co a correlation coefficient is 0.2. So we're going to be, they already computed the standard deviation um, for us as well. And our minimum variance portfolio is when we invest 0 0.09 in stocks. Our expected return is 5.46. And our standard deviation is 7.8. Simply put, we are looking at this point here about the minimum variance portfolio. This is still our minimum variance portfolio. So what are we going to do now? What are we going to do now? I'm going to I'm going to use the same graph. I'm going to use the same graph, but I'm going to use a different different uh, different scaling. So I'm going to draw another port, another graph here with the same information with different scaling. So let me go ahead and do so. Expected return and the standard deviation. And basically we have a standard deviation of I'm going to use 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. So those are the, I'm just using different scale because we're going to be adding a little bit to this graph. So I prefer to draw it, then show you the, the final product, show you what it looks like at the end. And for the return, we're going to do 3, we're going to do 4, we're going to do 5, return 6, 7, eight nine i'm not sure how much how much the scaling is going to work but let's go ahead and do so so remember the remember the minimum variance portfolio is the return is 5.46 so 5.46 and 7.8 someplace here so this is the this is the minimum variance so let's go ahead and draw like an approximate line okay now so i'm gonna go like this something like this so all what i'm doing now all all, all 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 what i did now is draw the same the same the same picture as here with different scaling and you're going to see why in a moment now we're going to be introducing so this is the minimum variance this is the minimum variance point minimum variance now remember we're introducing a new asset and with this asset that risky free asset has a three percent return so anytime we start now we're going to be starting at three percent of we could if we invest everything in risky free asset we'll earn three percent so we'll be right here now let's graph some combinations let's graph some combination so zero percent if we invested zero percent in i'm sorry if we invested nothing in stocks and we invested everything in bonds what's going to happen the bonds it's going to give us five percent so we're going to have three percent from the risk free rate and five percent so simply put this is the first cal the capital allocation line that goes through that goes through the minimum variance portfolio the minimum variance portfolio so there we go this is the first this is the I'm going to call it CAL minimum. Now notice what happened. 
the line is no longer curved. So this is the this is the curve line. The line is no longer curved. The line is straight because we are we are starting from the y axis and we're drawing a line. Therefore, the curve will be straight. Okay. Let's draw another another combination. So rather than zero and uh, zero and one, let's put twenty percent in stocks. And what would be the expected return? The expected return will be around. Notice the expected return will be six percent now. The expected return is six so the expected return will be someplace like this so we're gonna have the line will go from uh, let me use a different color for this portfolio three percent and we'll go through six and this is this is we're gonna call this portfolio c a l a portfolio a okay now we can draw we can keep on drawing these portfolios we can go and draw these portfolios but the question is what is the best portfolio? What's the optimal portfolio? What's the composition of the optimal risky portfolio? Okay, so here's what we can do to find this because we can also do, th we can grab this, we can grab this. So how do we find out that we got to the, our optimal risky portfolio? So to find the composition of the optimal risky portfolio, we search the weight and the stock and bonds fund that maximize the portfolio Sharpie ratio. Now let me, before we proceed, let's compute the Sharpie ratio for these two portfolios. Okay, let's compute the minimum variance. The minimum variance has has a return of 5.46, 5.46 minus 3% the risk free rate. This is the risk free premium, and the standard deviation is 7.8. So the, the Sharpie ratio is 0 0.32. The Sharpie ratio for A, the return is 6 minus 3% the risk free, and the and the standard deviation, we're gonna say 8% or around 8%. It's specifically 8.07.37. So notice here, we would definitely prefer this portfolio over this portfolio. Uh, yes, we'll prefer the portfolio A over the minimum variance because look, our Sharpie ratio is higher, okay, uh, relative to this portfolio. Now again, we're going to have to keep on finding finding out where do we find that maximum Sharpie ratio because at some point it's going to go down again. So we use this formula and you don't have to worry about this formula for now. We use this formula to find out the optimal the optimal weight. So to find the optimal weight, we find out that the optimal weight is 0.568 for bonds and 0.432 for stocks. So some place, so five, uh, we have the stocks here. The weight for stocks is point. 0.432. So it's someplace in this area, a little bit then, a little bit then 4.42, and the remaining is in bonds. And when we do the computation, basically when we compute the expected return of this portfolio, we find out that the expected return is 7.16 and the standard deviation equal to 10.15. And the Sharpie ratio for this portfolio will be 0.41. So the expected return is 7.16 minus the risk free rate divided by the standard deviation. Again, how did we come up with this? We just, we kept on just assuming we kept on plotting all of these until we find out and computing the Sharpie ratio. Again, the formula, don't worry about the formula. Uh, don't worry about how we find out the formula. There's a formula to find out this optimal risky portfolio. Now, let me show you the graph itself rather than my crappy graph. And this is the graph that I was telling you about. So if we keep on once we introduce the risk-free rate, first of all, the the CAL is basically a straight line, not curved, okay? Because you are starting from the Y. So what's going to happen is this. The optimal risky portfolio is at this point. This is an important point. So this is the efficient frontier. Oh, let me do this. Let me do this in red. This is the efficient frontier, okay? And we're, at, we're the tangent point, we're, we're, we're this line, where the CAL hit the efficient frontier at that point. This is when, when it hit it, like tangent. It's the tangent point. We call it the optimal risky portfolio. This is the optimal risky portfolio. This is the target portfolio, okay? And this is where you have the highest Sharpie ratio or sharp ratio. I just like always call him Sharpie. I don't know why. The highest sharp ratio, which is 0.41. Okay, now we find out what's the combination, what's the best combination of stocks and bonds. It doesn't mean you, that's if you invested everything, you're not going to invest 100% in here, but this is the optimal weight. This is the optimal weight. Okay, so the best is to have 56 in bonds 
and 43 in stocks. So the preferred complete portfolio from a risky portfolio and risk-free asset depends obviously on your risk aversion. More risk aversion person will, pre will prefer low risk portfolio despite the expected return. And if you are more risk tolerance, you choose the higher risk, which is we already learned about this in the prior session. Now, both type of investors will choose portfolio O. Why? Because portfolio O gives them the highest return per risk. It provides the highest return per risk. That tangent point, when you find this tangent point, this is your highest return per risk. So that's why whether you are risk averse or risk tolerant, you will pref your best option is this combination. So now you don't, you know, investor will defer only in their allocation. Now they, they may want to put only 80% in 80% in this and remaining in the risk-free asset, or they may want to put 90% or they want to put 80% here and 20% here. It just depends on how they split it. But the point is we know how to split it. So let's take a look at one possible choice, one possible choice of the preferred portfolio C. Let's assume the investor places 55% of their wealth in portfolio O and 45% in treasury in treasury bill. Simply put, to find the expected return, we'll take 3% times 45. This is what they invested in the treasury bill. And the remainder is invested in the risky portfolio that earned 7.16. They're not putting everything in 7.16. If they put all their money in this portfolio, 100%, then the expected return will be 7.16. They're only putting, that's what they want. They, they're a little bit more than half they want to go risky and a little, li, little bit less than half they want to be risk-free. So the expected return of this complete portfolio is 5.29, and the standard deviation of this portfolio is only the standard deviation of the risky, risky assets, which is the 10.15 from the previous slide. Therefore, the standard deviation of the portfolio is 5.18. Therefore, it would look something like this. So this, 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 this portfolio, what they did is said, look, we're going to invest 45% at 45% of our fund at 3% and 55% at 7.16. And here we have port when we when we compute the expected return, when we combine those two, compute the expected return, overall we're gonna be expected to earn 5.29 with a standard deviation of 5.58. So simply put, here's what's gonna happen to be more specific. Because portfolio is a mis mix of bond fund and stock fund with a weight of 56 and 43.2 here's how we're going to allocate it for the risk-free asset we're going to give them 45 percent and the remaining 55 percent will be allocated using 56.8 to the to the bond fund and 43.2 to the risk fund simply put another picture of this is something like this so i would say this is a conservative portfolio because only a little bit than half is invested in something other than risk-free and half of that well, a little bit more than half is even invested in bonds. So notice, I would say this is a conservative portfolio. What else can you do? For example, you could have have done is 20%, keep 20% here and take the 80% and split the 80%, 56 to bonds, 43.2 to stocks, and you'll be a little bit more riskier. And if you want to, you could only do 5% in, in T-bills and risk-free and the remaining 95% split at 56 and 43. It all depends on your risk, risk tolerance. In the next session, we'll look at an example that deals with the optimal risky portfolio with the risk-free asset. As always, I'm going to remind you to like and share my recording if you like them. And don't forget to visit my website, farhatlectures.com, if you want to complement and supplement this course as well as other courses, accounting, finance. If you're studying for your professional certification, invest well in your career because that certification will pay dividend for years. Study, say, study well and stay safe.